Yes, Angela Sivalera. Okay. okay. So shall yes, I put uh, to re record? Do I need to do uh, that? I, I put the recording on, so we are fine to go. Okay, so I don't need to do that. Okay. So let me start then uh, this tutorial or introduction. I will first say this is my outline of my talk. Of course, I will not finish everything this, but I will try uh, to do to talk uh, uh, basic things about variable neighborhood search meta heuristic. I will define optimization problem. Then I will say something about uh, generally uh, about meta heuristics of techniques for solving optimization problem. Then about VNA's basic variants and then some applications in continuous optimization, in integer programming, community detection, and so on. That those, uh, the rest is uh, four, five, six possible applications. But of course, there are many, many other fields where you can apply variable neighborhood search. So what is optimization problem? So we have, let's uh, let f of x be a real valued objective function, okay? And then as solution space, x a set of feasible solutions, and x solution or a point, okay, that belongs to set of feasible solution, we define some optimization problem and minimizing or maximizing some real value function, f of x, objective function, such that x or solution belongs to feasible set, which is subset of solution space of possible solutions. That is definition of optimization problem in general. So, so if solution space is a set of combinatorial objects, like routes, locations, whatever could be subsets, uh, then we talk about discrete optimization problem. If it is a Euclidean space, uh, we have continuous optimization problems. So, most problem optimization problem are so-called MP-hard, or if you look at continuous optimization, you can say they are non-convex nor concave. So, you could have millions of local minima, and that is, in fact, the uh, reason why optimization problems could be hard to solve. If it is just one local minimum or one local, which is convex or concave, then it's easy with classical mathematics. So I will explain later what are the main issue. It is uh, MP hardness. That means that the optimal problem uh, cannot be constructed in worst case polynomial time. So, in other words, in the simple words, you can spend 10 years in solving one problem with 100 variables if problem is MP hard. But your solution should be obtained faster, uh, sometimes in a minute, in a second, so you don't have time to check if your exact solution method will solve your problem or not. In which case, all other MP hard problems can also be solved in polynomial time. There are uh, another examples, traveling salesman problem. I will define after some of those combinatorial hard optimization, satisfiability, maximum click problem, graph coloring, and so on. Some elementary problem that you can, uh, if you want exact solution, you can spend a year or two or ten to get the exact solution, but in practice you don't have time to do that. Okay, this is the basic book or Bible, how you want for compute uh, for theory of completeness of uh, intractability. What problems are uh, MP hard, what are not? Of course, not all problems are MP hard, like shortest path or minimum spanning tree and so on are not. This is a famous picture where this is a boss here presented in that book of uh, Gary and Johnson. You have here boss and you have here uh, his scientist 
who didn't solve some problem. Boss is angry here, as you can see, but he said, I cannot solve it. But neither of all those uh, people, famous guy, cannot solve as well. So, but in the queue, Newton, uh, Einstein, and all other guys. So this means the problem is simply hard and nobody can solve it efficiently and exactly. That's why we have uh, heuristics. So the basic thing, uh, as I already mentioned, is uh, uh, the, the existence of a million of a local minima. As you can see here, in one dimensional function, continuous function in one dimensional space, you can see here three local minima, but only one is global. Okay. So how to find that global minimum? That's the main issue in uh, solving hard optimization problem. If you use classical means, classical mathematics, you can find uh, uh, derivative first order and then put equal to zero and find local minima, but could be millions of them. Okay, so you need to have some procedure for finding global minimum, uh, and it is not usually possible with classical mathematics. Okay, so only one is here global minimum. So if you look at optimization problem and you want to solve that problem, then all methods you can divide in three big groups. One is exact methods, desirable, but cannot solve a large real life problems as I explained to you before. So uh, then you have approximate heuristics, uh, which are also divided in classical and meta heuristics. And then you have the simulation uh, method methods. Simulation are devoted for solving most complex problems. In cases even you cannot find uh, a mathematical programming formulation of a problem. Simulation is you simulate, as you know, on the computer, the real world situation and collect some data and make decision based on that simulation, uh, make decision or find some kind of optimal solution. And then uh, nowadays, most popular approach is th that one in, in between these two, it's heuristics. You know what is the word Eureka for, from where heuristic uh, comes from, like Archimed when he found that he, his Archimed law famous, he said Eureka, Eureka, I found, I found, something like that. So heuristics are in fact something methodology based on tricks, on idea, and then uh, <coughs> <clears throat> For each other, when we talk about classical heuristics, we think that each problem, which is hard, uh, has their own uh, heuristic methods. But meta heuristics is something more general or framework for building heuristic that I will a little bit later explain. So what is motivation? As I mentioned, one re uh, uh, in real world problem, Problems are hard, size is huge, not well defined and so on. Heuristic methods are often robust uh, choices. The real world often don't need the optimal solution. That is another argument. Uh, there are many cases where decision makers do not need optimal solution. It's enough to have close to optimal. Even in some cases, if you always get optimal solution, it's not good like in human nutrition problem. You always minimize the price of uh, feeding or of nutrition, but you know, gastronomy uh, criteria are not included in that. So sometimes you need uh, different solutions very close to optimal solution. So men are not optimizers, but satisfizers. That's some citation from Herb Simon. Okay, so that is a trade-off between heuristic, simulation, or exact solution. So, as I said, heuristic methods could be divided in uh, classical, 
heuristics and meta heuristics. Okay. Classical heuristics appeared in the literature from 50 to 70. And then uh, uh, many of them appeared in the literature. And then in the, before 60s, they were less and less popular in the scientific literature. Because uh, a strong mathematician uh, argued that uh, why we need something, some solution that we even do not know how close it is to optimal. So you should have some measure how close you are to optimal and people oriented on that. But practitioners wanted heuristic to solve their problem, really. So classical heuristic, it's constructive or greedy heuristics where you start from scratch and build solution uh, step by step. You have local search, you have relaxation, space reduction, Lagrangian heuristic, and I will not go into details for all of those classical heuristics. Probably some of most of you know about that. But about 70s, uh, Kirkpatrick and uh, his team first suggested uh, sorry about this, to come back. First suggest simulated annealing, kind of, and after some time, uh, convergence of similar to global optimal was uh, was proved uh, by some mathematician and proved was very long. But that was enough good reason for mathematicians to say, okay, we have a proof of convergence, and that's why meta heuristics uh, became uh, very popular from 1972 when this paper. Then we had tabu search, variable neighborhood search. Uh, what's, what's that? Uh, greedy local searches. No, it's not greedy. And then greedy randomized adaptive search procedures. Okay. Then appeared the many. Uh, meta, -heurist uh, meta heuristics based on uh, nature inspired algorithms inspired by nature. Genetic algorithms, genetic programming, particle swarm optimization, ant colony optimization, bee colony, artificial bee colony, and so on. Now you have maybe more than 100 different uh, meta heuristics inspired by nature. Sometimes scientists exaggerate. You have, for example, ju jumping frog, kangaroo, f elephant, and so on. So people are inspired, like just to have their own, in my view, their own uh, method methodology, which is usually in mathematical terms, not really very new. Okay. So the most interesting, in my view, a uh, classical heuristic is local search heuristic, where you, for a given solution, you want to move from there and to find kind of better solution in the neighborhood. It is local search heuristics, classical heuristics, where you modify a given solution to get all neighboring solution, and then you take the best neighbor, and then you repeat that procedure uh, again to find a better than the current one. We usually call it incumbent solution. If it is better, you move there. If it is not better, you are trapped in local minimum or maximum. So in uh, that local search classical heuristics, you need to uh, find a new objective function value in the neighborhood and check if it is feasible if it satisfies all the constraints you have. So this is kind of introduction for, okay, again, all kind of meta heuristics are here listed. Okay, and then it was neighborhood search was, uh, or local search or neighborhood search was kind of introduction to variable neighborhood search that I am going to present. Okay, so, it is first proposed in 1997, okay, and then main idea is systematically change the neighborhood structure in searching for the better solution. So, 
So uh, local search has already that idea, uh, as I said, but we have three, we have variable neighborhood search means that a local, me why it is successful? Because local minimum with respect to one neighborhood structure is not necessary local minimum with another neighborhood structure. Uh, Tabu search heuristic, for example, is also local search type meta heuristic, but once Tabu search finds local minimum, it goes up, given number of steps, which is parameter, basic parameter of Tabu search. How many steps you are going up, uh, hoping that uh, when you come to the top, the next value will have a uh, lower objective function value, that you will have some improvement. But here in the VNS, we are not moving from local minimum. We are just changing the neighborhood of that point and track if in that neighborhood, new neighborhood structure, we can get better solution based on this fact, simple fact that local minimum with respect to one neighborhood is not uh, local with respect to another. Another obvious fact is the global minimum with respect to all possible structure is, uh, is a local. So if you are on the top of Himalaya, it doesn't matter what neighborhood structure around you choose, what points are around you are with respect to all neighborhoods, you are in global minimum. And then the third uh, fact, basic fact that uh, is also very useful for all uh, other meta heuristics of local search type that for many problems, local minima with respect uh, uh, to one or several neighborhoods are close to each other. If your problem is location problem, then some locations are obviously good and some you need to choose to get uh, optimal solutions. So this means in the space of solution space, all those local minima with good locations are very, very close to each other. So I don't need a multi-start procedure to start from scratch, uh, getting one local minimum, let's try another local. So that's why multi-start is not working, but double search, VNS, GRASP, and other uh, local search type of heuristics are working. So here is the basic algorithm of basic variable neighborhood search. So most of uh, uh, Participants of this conference will refer when they use basic variable neighborhood to this algorithm. You can see here, uh, do I have, is this, uh, uh, can you see my, probably you can see where I, where is my pointer. So if you are here in this point, uh, that is initial point for my optimization problem, let's say in three dimensions, here is the global minimum, and currently I'm here. Then I define neighborhood here around this point. Okay, so so I find the best in the neighborhood. Let's say it's this one, x prime, the given here. Then I make another cycle or another set of neighborhood points around that. Then I got better, better until I got local minimum. Here I am in local minimum. X uh, uh, at second, or I, don't, I cannot see. You cannot see the pointer. How can I, uh, can somebody give me advice how to activate pointer? Because I see here uh, pointer. But uh, if you're on, if the, you're on the PowerPoint. Yes. Can you move? Is it move? on the PowerPoint? Is it on the PowerPoint? Yes, on PowerPoint. Okay. No, I think. No, uh, think uh, uh, huh? Right click and choose pointer. Right click. Right click and choose pointer. Ah, uh, no, no, nothing happened. No, it's a slice yeah. of shared, so it will not. It will not Copy, not working. Okay, sorry about that's a, a big disadvantage, but 
you go to this picture, may exit the full uh, full mode. Form one slide to another. How can I do that? Okay, no. But look uh, at the top point here. That is the first point, and then with these three, uh, with these three like rings, you have local minimum. Then first neighborhood in a gray color. I try there. I didn't get better solution. I remove there. Then I change neighborhood. This is the second cycle around this solution. Okay, and then I find the best. In the neighborhood, you can see objective function with dotted line. So local search after that. So uh, come back again. Then I jump to the third neighborhood, then do local search and move to another local minimum, second one. You have here three in total local minimum, this figure. So there are two basic steps of variable neighborhood search is shake in the neighborhood, randomly take a point in neighborhood K. So you first define, predefine several neighborhood uh, structures of, of, your, of your problem around the incumbent solution. And then it's used just for shaking or taking random point in neighborhood K. That is shake function, as you can see on left hand side as prime. So while k less than k max, the single parameter of variable neighborhood search is number of neighborhood you are using. So it is k max. So you hear while uh, this is the inner loop, but the, the outer loop, why some stopping condition is not met, do. So stopping condition could be maximum number of iterations, could be CPU time you want to spend to get this solution, or number of unsuccessful moves, an unsuccessful iteration before you stop. So you said I try 10 times uh, going to maximum, to, going to the maximum uh, neighborhood uh, that I predefined, and then uh, 10 times I didn't get improvement, stop. So that could be possible stopping conditions. But inner loop is in going to K max successfully or not. So you shake and then do local search. Shake local search. If you get better, you again start from neighborhood one. So you see here we got better. You cannot see my pointer, unfortunately. But if you look at the second local minimum here, so I got it. Then I again uh, uh, return to neighborhood one. So my cycle here is again the small one. And then again, I try to get random point in neighborhood one, then perform local search, I'm back. Then again, random point in neighborhood two, again, local search, I'm back. No, in fact, I got this global in neighborhood two after local search. So you have in, in fact, in inner loop of variable neighborhood search, you have three basic steps. Shake, local search, and uh, move or not, or neighborhood change step. Neighborhood, you change here neighborhood in step three. Return to first one or increase by one. So if not better in neighborhood one, then I go to neighborhood two. I do not go up as in double search or some other strategy. We stay in the incumbent best solution and change neighborhood, okay, around that. That is why it is variable neighborhood. This is basic variable neighborhood search with these three steps. And let me now present uh, how it works on some combinatorial optimization problem. You can imagine here is a graph, okay, a weighted graph, you have uh, 11, 12 nodes on this graph. It is sparse graph, means not uh, th there are not many edges that connect them, and you have weights on edges. So in fact, this is a case 
of Norwegian uh, oil platforms. They have they had uh, 12 platforms at the sea, okay, uh, uh, onshore. Offshore, uh, offshore, as a sea, and they decided to make uh, one restaurant, uh, but to co connect uh, five closest, five closest nodes platforms because people are working there and decide one of them to have the minimum distance weighted uh, with those weights or the, if this is the distance between two platforms, so you need to. Uh, put a restaurant or to find, in general, K cardinality tree. Find a tree structure, okay, with four uh, edges. So this means five nodes, four edges or five nodes. So if you, uh, why we choose this example? Because in a book of uh, Glover and uh, Kotchenberger, no, uh, Glover and uh, uh, Laguna of Table Search, they use that example to show how Tabu search is working. So we choose the same example. As you can see, this is initial solution. It is feasible, means that we really have four edges in this solution and five nodes. Okay, And then when you look what is the total distance that we want to minimize, here is one plus 25, 26 plus 8 plus 6, it is equal to 40. So now I'm looking, can I move from this solution to get better solution? Or is it a local minimum or not? What can I, uh, how can I do that? I can introduce neighborhood structure, which is to get another tree by elementary tree transformation, so-called uh, from graph theory, but means you add one edge and remove one edge. So how many different ways I have here to add one edge to this solution? Solution number zero, okay? How many ways I can add this one? Remove six uh, land. I can add uh, 26 or I can add, let's say, between, okay, you do not see my pointer, which is unfortunate, but I can add this 17, okay, and remove this one, or I can add 15, remove one, and so on. So all those possible trees are feasible, okay, uh, when we look at the current solution or current tree whose objective function is 40. Out of all of those feasible trees, which is neighborhood, I choose I, in a VNS, I, I'm trying to find the uh, best one. But you can easily see that there is no better in the neighborhood than this one. You see 1 plus 25 plus 1 plus 8, whatever you add and remove, you will get more than 40 objective function value or total length. Means this is local minimum. So in this case, this my solution is local minimum. So how to continue? So if if I take, I don't know if this pencil is working. No, it's not working. Okay, I wanted to present uh, how we, so local uh, minimum is 40 and it is local minimum. Now in the VNS, I take any solution from the neighborhood at random. This is neighboring solution and its objective function is 60, but it is in the neighborhood. So not better, even worse, but my algorithm found that because it's a random neighboring solution. 26 plus 1 plus 25 plus 8 is equal to 60. You can here see in the right hand corner the objective function value and step is first shaking step. Now I do local search means add one, remove one, add one, all possibilities. And I came, unfortunately, came back to the same initial solution return. So the picture number three here, we after local search, uh, we got again 40. So we are again in the uh, initial solution. Then 
I am shaking neighborhood two means remove two, add two randomly. So here I remove this uh, connection one and 25, as you can see. And instead of that, add this 17 plus 16. And I got after shaking this to 47 objective function. 17 plus 8 plus 6 plus 16 is 47, as you can see at uh, picture number 3. In fact, the first line of a second, se second row of this picture. So 47, you can see objective function value after uh, shaking in neighborhood 2. Then again, we apply local search step, as you can see in the right uh, corner upper corner that it is local search step where you try all possibilities, uh, add, remove, add, and then you got this solution, which is in the right hand side corner 39. 8 plus 6 plus 16 plus 9 is 39. Now you compare 40, previous best solution, and 39, you got improvement. Means you move to this solution. So that is my current solution. I move from uh, zero uh, slide to four, uh, to picture number four, okay? Then we go to shake again, we return, then we shake and we found the global optimal solution in the last slide, uh, as the last picture and the right corner, which was 36, nine plus nine plus nine plus nine. So they decided, to connect those five platforms in order. We assume that in each platform you had the same number of people. So that's most economic way to build a restaurant is to choose uh, these uh, five nodes to minimize the total length. That's one explanation of K cardinality. In our case, we have four cardinality three problem, which is also proved to be NP hard problem. So the number of trees is usually, if you have N uh, uh, complete graph with N nodes, uh, is number of trees is usually N to the power of N minus one, obviously very much exponential, so not polynomial. So briefly VMS history, First time I proposed it in optimization days, Montreal. Then our first paper uh, now has 4,300 citations, and uh, it is third the most cited paper in uh, computers and OR ever. Okay, and then another things we also have seven international conferences. This one is eight. Uh, we are we are going to participate in one something more than one hour. So we also had uh, several special issues of top journals after the conference, computers are uh, European Journal of, uh, Journal of Heuristics, Journal of Global Optimization, International Transactions of OR, uh, IMA Journal of Management Mathematics, optimization letters, Yugoslav Journal of OR, and so on. There are uh, more than 10 special issues devoted to conferences. This is eight one. So several chapters in encyclopedia. So despite of the fact that idea is very simple, when you are in a hall, what you are doing, you are staying there and trying. No, it's not the, uh, how to say, VNS is interesting because it does not follow a three-dimensional space as other, even uh, it's inspired, inspired by uh, nature. Because in three-dimensional space, you must go up. So if you are down, you must go up. But in mathematical spaces, especially in combinatorial optimization spaces, if you decide, define another neighborhood structure, you can stay there and all landscape is changing and you continue from there going down. So that is something in mathematics, but not in real world, uh, only in movies and movies when you, you see that uh, all landscape is changing and you can 
continue searching for minimum or for maximum for a point where you are staying. So this is simple idea. If you are there, stay and uh, try to r jump somewhere random, do local search and then see what you get then again and so on. But following that simple idea, we have several also simple variants or extensions or simplification. The simplest variant is reduced variable neighborhood search, where you simply remove local search. I will show after uh, pseudocodes of all those simple variants. Variable neighborhood descent, which is deterministic variant, you simply have no random step. You don't have shaking. You just do several different local searches. What I explained to you, you stay in the same point and you are changing just landscape. The basic I explained to you, you have randomness going out from local minimum and like kind of intensification going uh, down from that random neighboring solution. Then we have general VNS, I will explain later, where you use uh, shaking as usual, but uh, local search is in fact uh, reduce VNS. Uh, not not redu local search is uh, uh, variable neighborhood descent. So you are using several neighborhoods in shaking and in local search, not only in shaking as in basic VNS. Skewed VNS is also a many uh, very nice uh, applications, uh, very good results, where in fact you use simple idea that if you are very far from your incumbent or best solution currently, but not very much worse solution than move there, maybe there is in that area, there is something. You see, that's obvious ideas because in optimization, it is in fact searching. Uh, solution space, going up, down, go left. So you are looking for one point in a million or much more than million, several million uh, points. You, you are looking just for one, but without eyes, you do not have eyes. So you are like a computer is jumping, just checking what is the value here or what is a high of this point and so on. So. Uh, sim simple idea in skewed VNS is uh, if I am very far, but uh, worse solution, but very far, accept it. Okay, and go from there. So the composition is for huge problems. There's uh, natural ways to decompose in smaller problems, and so on. More theoretical primal dual VNS, where you guarantee how far you are from optimal solution because you go to dual space. VNS branching, I will talk for mixed integer a little bit later. OK, and there are many, many variants in the literature. Also, uh, so here is again, uh, this is basic variable neighborhood search, as you can see here, and reduce VNS, you simply remove local search. You just have shake simplicity of this algorithm is very high. It's very simple. It is like Monte Carlo. If you know Monte Carlo is the simplest possible heuristic method for optimization, where you simply take random point from solution space, find objective function, then again, take random and so on and keep the best. At the end, you keep the best solution. This regarding simplicity reduced VNS is also so simple. So you take random solution, okay, uh, calculate objective function, then you jump to neighborhood one and uh, uh, calculate objective function. But uh, the thing is that uh, if you are using neighborhood structures, you can use updating. So you don't need to uh, calculate objective function value from scratch. So you do some little change and get uh, objective function value in the neighborhood in a uh, very fast, let's say, million part of a second, not from the beginning that the 100 dimensional space 
you would spend a lot of time like in Monte Carlo or local search here, multi-start local search. So you are just shaking and moving if it is better. Okay. And then another neighborhood structure, K max is usually two or three for reduced VNS uh, based on my and others experience. So you just jump neighborhood one, neighborhood two, neighborhood one, neighborhood two, neighborhood one. So 10 times like that. Okay, I got better move again, neighborhood one and so on. So you are trying randomly and it appeared that it's uh, unbe unbelievable uh, good or uh, uh, unbelievable uh, efficient and effective, very nice quality solutions comparable with some local searches with in 10 times less, less time. Okay, simple but efficient and that is the basic idea of all heuristics and meta heuristics. Variable neighborhood descent, as I told you, you are changing, uh, you don't have, you avoid shaking, shake going out and you just have local search but with respect to several different structures. General VNS you use as a local search, you lose, you use VND, so you use both neighborhood structures. Okay, N now we have different variants of VND, but I will jump on that because I'm going out of time. Uh, VND is deterministic way of variable neighborhood search where you change one by another a different neighborhood structure in the deterministic way, but you can always, when you get better solution in, let's say, some neighborhood after, you go to first neighborhood, or that is basic VND. Then in a pipe VND, you are uh, uh, not, you are removing that, you are simply continue to next neighborhood, but move to better solution. So you are not returning to the first neighborhood in your list, then you have everything very simple for computer scientists. So cyclic VND, you improve it anyway. You go to next solution, you find a better, okay, you go to next, next neighborhood, but move to the, of course, to the incumbent better solution. And union of neighborhoods, many authors, famous authors, thought that union of several neighborhoods is the best possible. But we found that it's not. Of course, it is best, but we are spending a lot of time visiting all uh, solutions in a union of many neighborhoods. Okay? But uh, in that time, you can use much because efficiency is very important in meta -heuristic. How many seconds and the methods are compared how much time you spend. We, uh, output criteria is CPU time. So if in 10 seconds, you know, I get some solution, uh, which is just one local search perform, and in 10 seconds I do all VNS, uh, you cannot compare how much all VNS then uh, union of neighborhood VND is bad, good but slow. There are many other variants appeared in the literature that you are going to listen if you come to listen to uh, this conference. There are three level, backward, two-phase VNS, Gaussian VNS for continuous, where you in shaking, you are using central limit theorem or let's say Gaussian distribution of a points that you found before to find the next uh, step to next random point, then and so on. You have for getting a initial solution, a variable neighborhood pump. You said many hybrids, and uh, you you can see it. Now here is the first application. I will go fast through that. Maybe not necessary, but because I, I, I the, just ten minutes remain. But you you know oh, oh, just a second. Okay, should be some pictures here. Let me just show you some pictures. Why don't pictures? Ah, here they are. So in a global optimization or continuous optimization, we have some 
test functions that are usually used to check how good is your algorithm. And the way how you are checking that, you, you uh, simply calculate the number of function evaluations. If I found, if I find global optimal, let's say for uh, a green walk function or a strigin uh, F7 here, if I find the global mean, you see you have millions local minima here. Here also in the Shevel function. Here also in Ackley function, Ackley function. So there are 10 standard test instances, even convex, easy. This problem is, for example, the simplest possible problem. Uh, sorry, where is it? This one. The simplest possible problem is convex. You have a local minimum, single local minimum is global. But other, you see how many local minimum, it's not so easy to find. Okay, and you calculate how good your method is uh, based on how many times you calculate objective function. It's not CPU time because many computers faster, smaller and so on. People in this area decided to look at number of, so I will go from back here. Those are uh, objective functions that are there, and you see uh, some old results. We have our VNS where GLOB VNS is this one. So for Brian function, we have 45, some tabu search, 245 function evaluations. Another tabu search 38 best in this case. Then you have simulated annealing. Then you have here uh, ant colony optimization and so on. Here you can see what we 150 functional. So you can see very good or best result on those uh, when you compare with other. How we did that? I don't have a time, but you can imagine how we ap apply those general steps for solving uh, for solving this problem. So you see, uh, this is a, a nonlinear programming problem formulation. So this is the neighborhood. Let me define it. You need to find the global minimum of some function in a, a in a real okay in a Euclidean space. You have two type of nonlinear constraints, inequality and equality Ajax equal to zero, and box constraints Xj between Aj and Bj. Okay, you can see that it's Euclidean space. So you, you have exact methods, but that uh, cannot solve large problems. And uh, with many conditions of uh, uh, continuity, differentiability, and so on. But for heuristics, you don't need to have all of those conditions. Uh, in variable neighborhood search, we define neighborhood and uh, K of X as a points Y where a row or Euclidean distance are less than some radius. So it is unit ball with respect to some norm. You have Euclidean norm, you have uh, another like Manhattan norm, I don't know, Chebyshev norm and so on. Or you can define neighborhood as a ring around that. So that's different way. So you have different definitions of uh, in continuous space. So that is how we apply in simple way. So you have a norm, you ju randomly jump in the neighborhood of that and dimensional solution. Then you perform some local search. We have in our list of software that we divide, uh, that we, uh, how to say, developed. Uh, we have six local searches, like for all type of, uh, for like Naldermid for non-continuous problems, Rosenbrock also method. There is also for one, dimensional optimization we have golden section and so on so we have a software general software for solving we call it glob as you can see here for solving 
uh, non, non convex, non concave global optimization problems. Here, how we include with penalty function method in our software uh, a set of constraints if problem is given as mathematical program. And here I don't have time to go into details, just told you those objective functions where you know optimal solution. Is somebody has a question? No? Okay, so let me go to another application of uh, VNS for zero one programming problem. Okay, if you look uh, typical zero one simplest, uh, which is MP hard, it's knapsack problem. So you have a number of items and items, you know the weight of each item and profit. If you put it in the knapsack, you want to maximize your profit, which is maximize CJ, XJ, subject to uh, the, the capacity or the, the volume of, uh, of a knapsack. You need to decide what items you are going to put in your knapsack. This is problem and be hard. Then you obviously define solution. So your solution is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So it's a sequence of 0, 1s means I will include this item. I will not include this one if I include and so on. So what is neighborhood? It is so-called humming distance when you switch from 1 to 0, 0 to 1. All possible such switches give you your neighborhood. Then you have another example for mixed integer zero one programming problem. Uh, traveling salesman problem with tie windows. Traveling salesman needs to visit n cities. You need to find order of his visiting those cities. Okay, but you also have time windows when he had to be in a such place. For example, if you are uh, driving truck with gasoline, you need to visit gasoline stations, but some from eight to nine, some from, I don't know, from 8.30 to 10, somebody and so on. This is time window for each station. And this is mathematical model of that problem. This is time windows here, AI between and so on. So you want to minimize the total distance of your truck but to satisfy once go in, once go out, here also, uh, once in, once out, the sum of those should be uh, one. So this is a famous uh, constraints known as assignment constraints. So that is an example of that. I see that I don't have time to present to you how we applied variable neighborhood search for solving general zero one and uh, in general that was uh, and uh, uh, the composition variable neighbor which was done by my phd student in uh, uh, london uh yasmin alazic and her results so many my students there is another application you are going to listen uh, last plenary talk in more detail also my PhD student uh, uh, Dushan Jamic will talk about community detection and uh, how VNS is applied on network optimization problem, community detection problem. Okay, and then they were very, uh, very competitive, not to say state of the art, VNS. So there are some kind of conclusion what uh, are desirable properties of any meta heuristic should be user friendliness. Heuristics should be clearly expressed, easy to understand, and most important, easy to use. This implies they should have as few parameters as possible, ideally, uh, ideally none, no parameter. VNS has just one parameter, uh, K max. If you apply it to search, you will see five, six, and students are usually lost. I must admit that uh, 20, 30 years ago, I was forced to do some uh, taboo search for network design problem, oil uh, design of uh, pipelines in South uh, 
uh, in, uh, was the name of uh, Gamba in Africa. And then after some time, I was lost also with so many parameters, and then I switched by myself and, uh, to variable neighborhood search, reducing number of par parameters, making it more user friendliness because people who are using need to understand and easily to get the solution. If you are in parametric space, changing parameters, you are lost. Of course, you can get after three, four months, pure students did in uh, in Montreal, where I was, uh, I got that project to work in South Gabo. Then should be innovation, Pref uh, preferably the principle of meta heuristic efficiency, effectiveness, of efficiency derived from it should lead to new type of applications. That's the case of VNS. Generality, incredibly, and so multi, and so you can see from my slides, I don't have time. It is exactly one o'clock. And so you can see what are our observation, Professor Hansen and myself in our first papers, uh, what some meta heuristics, what are desirable properties. Uh, as you can see, many today do not have those desirable properties. They are very complex hybrids of many ideas and people are lost. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, if you have some question, I am ready to answer. Andre. Yes, thank you, Dr. Yes, Nenets. Thank you. So, anybody so, has questions? Thank you, Dan. I, I think that everything was very clear. <laughs> then okay. that's why no questions. Um, uh, yes, Professor Nedent. Uh, yes. Hi, I am uh, Federico. Uh, Hi, thank you for your great presentation. Uh, I have a, a question um, coming from, I'm not very expert of these topics, as you know. Uh, I dare to make this question because it is a tutorial before the conference, so I am uh, apologize if I sound naive uh, to some of you. Um, as you know, there are big uh, attention nowadays on machine learning and neural network and this kind of uh, tools that also deal with optimization at the end of the story. I would like to know, in your opinion, where those methods fit, in, especially in the introductory part that you have uh, uh, provided to us. If you have any comment about how we can locate those methods in the big picture. Uh, it is one of uh, a methodology uh, you can compare, but uh, uh, neural networks and the other that you mentioned are more general, I would say. This is also general. And uh, you can, uh, I heard, I saw many papers, VNS with neural networks, if you want to intensify things. I even have a paper with some colleagues from Spain, from Tenerife, who had my name, I didn't work much. But they, in a neural network, for example, you get some uh, non-linear objective function that you need uh, uh, generally prepared, then you need to find, and you can use any technique. So we used VNS and we were very successful. Uh, regarding uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning and uh, such, the, their, the final presentation uh, uh, invited talk by Professor Bassem uh, Jarboui, uh, it will talk about that like connection VNS and, uh, and uh, machine learning. Uh, in fact, I also had uh, several uh, lectures before on some conferences with that topic, but it will be no time to talk, you know, now. He will, uh, all hour, he will talk about that. Thank you so much, Professor, thank you. Thank you, Frederico, for being here. Anybody else? Nenad, uh, question for you. Yes. I am Yuri Kochetov from Novosibirsk, Russia. I know. <laughs> What's the time there? <laughs> it's me as well. Uh, Nenad, uh, what can you say about the 
some ideas how to select the neighborhood structures because I believe it is the most important part in your approach. Uh, I understand that in some cases it is easy, but in general we need uh, something like uh, rules or maybe some ideas how to select them. Can you say something about it? Yes, I can say uh, of my, uh, something uh, uh, that I, from my experience in so many 30 years applying this technique. You usually start how you present your solution in a computer memory. And then you look, it is a strongly problem specific question. Of course, you have some general interchange, two opt, three opt, if solution is a permutation or if it is a, a finding the subset uh, one in, one out, interchange and so on. That is something which is obvious. But regarding with the many, uh, if you have many constraints in your problem, then it becomes problem specific. Then you present your solution in a possible ways how to present your solution in computer memory and oriented in a way how best I can update objective function value. So if I present like that or like that, then updating is of n or of n square or of one. That is the basic decision you need. That is kind of art. That is why we are publishing so many papers. So if it would be just take the set of those neighborhoods, then you know, you just select the, the uh, known neighborhood structures. But sometimes you have so specific things how to present. So I usually start how you present your solution in computer memory and then look what can I change a little to keep feasibility, but to get a neighborhood. So I think that uh, it's, uh, uh, how to say, it's a uh, uh, problem specific, pro uh, uh, no general rules. Okay, thank you. Yeah, welcome. Can I go in? Yes, Dr. Pardo. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Hi, Nenath, good morning. Hi, Anis. I am very, I'm very happy to see you today here. I thank you for the presentation. Uh -huh. We really enjoyed the tutorial. Um, I have a question about naming. Uh, you were talking at the beginning of the of the of your talk about VO inspired um, methodologies and that we have many names for calling probably the same things. So I am a bit worried as, about uh, also the naming we are using in VNS, and I would like to see what you think about it. Um, sometimes as reviewer, um, I find that many researchers talk about VNS, but they don't put the specific version of VNS they are using, and um, uh, other times I found the opposite. People just calling using additional names to VNS, just putting like a kind of surname on that. So what do you think? Do you think that we have already like uh, enough names to call all the variants that we have? Um, are we going to keep growing on the names of variants or we should just stick to the VNS as general name? Thank you. Of course, of course I am for a stick to VNS as a general name. So uh, as you, you can understand that uh, people do not know everything. So uh, many people are uh, just uh, heard about VNS, read one or two papers, do not follow, uh, you know, strictly. And then they think that they discover something and they put their name. Unfortunately, we depend on uh, reviewers and then reviewers of many journals. If it was me, then fine, you know. I reject, I change names and so on. But if it was somebody else, then you see some other names for the same procedure regarding, probably not just for VNS. And then I'm trying to put everything under one umbrella, let's say, to have some variants of VNS. You know, I don't want to uh, mention now all kinds of names that appeared in the literature. Uh, following just steps of VNS, but different name. Don't want to to do that. I I know all of them who did that. And uh, uh, as I told you, we depend on uh, reviewers. If uh, uh, some journal take a reviewer who are not follow closely uh, literature or what other people did, 
then it can pass. And then if once it pass, then they can uh, refer to that one. And then, you know, you have yes. uh, branches, uh, iterated local search, you know, uh, what is uh, hostile strategic oscillation, different names not to mention, which okay. are follow the same idea. Thank you. Thank you, Renel. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Anybody else have questions? I see people enjoyed presentations. It was indeed very interesting. Um, you see the emails of Dr. Nenot. For our students, we advise, we encourage them to contact Dr. Nenot if they try to use the technique. Um, for the rest, please join the conference. And please engage in the talks and we will discuss it during the next three days. Thank you. Okay, thank you very present. much. Also from my from my side, thank you, Andre, for for uh, pre uh, presenting me and for uh, doing great job in organizing this. I must I will mention several times this. Andre was the key figure for organization, and uh, thank you for that. Okay. okay so see you, see you in one hour, I think. Yes, see everybody in one hour. We will have welcome notes. We will talk a little bit about organization of the rest of the conference. Um, so yeah, officially we will start in uh, 50 minutes. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, let's Bye.